Okay? We're going to do a stress reduction activity. So what's a stress reduction activity? Oh, we have a visitor. He's from the Montana Forestry Service. He's looking for a new job, so he's thinking about coming and working overseas. How we pick the UAE is well beyond me. From Montana to the UAE, go figure. Okay, so what we're looking at is the test is on what day? 15th of January, and it's on 7 and 8. I have it right here, Form B. Okay, 40 questions. Not bad, huh? Remember, in order to do this test, this test is like a midterm exam. You need to know everything we've done for the entire year, with exception of data reduction, of course, in order to do this test. Let me read one for you. What is the formula unit of aluminum oxide? Sound familiar? Wow, huh? Cool, huh? Aluminum oxide. How would you do that? How would you find the formula unit for aluminum oxide? What's a formula unit? What kind of compounds are... Oh, my God. Five points for UAE team. Excellent. I like that. Shall we do another one? Yeah. You ready? You ready? You ready? All right. How many valence electrons are in the silicon atom? How many valence electrons are in the silicon atom? Yes. Four. Four. That's it. And that's all we're going to do. Oh, I'll do one more. I'll do one more. What is the shape of a molecule? And they're just giving some, it's like multiple choice. But if I said to you, what is the shape of a molecule with a triple bond? What would that be? A triple bond. Oh my God, linear, yes, excellent. God bless Lebanon. I have a friend who's going to be working in Lebanon next year. I want to know all about it. Excellent. So one thing about this class is we have a lot of people from other countries. It's really quite exciting. Okay, now, so let's do the triple bond, okay? The most explosive gas known to man, okay, that's naturally forming. It's called acetylene. They used to use it in the mines. Like, let's say, I don't know a lot about mining in other countries, but I know that in mines in West Virginia, though it's a big area, it's a state, one of the states, broke away from Virginia during the Civil War, a lot of history there, a lot of mountains, a lot of mining. And what they used to use before the onset of electricity and batteries and that sort of thing, they had to find their way, right? They had to light their way, correct? So what they did was, they did this. It's a chemical reaction. Are you ready for this? It's called calcium carbide. Calcium carbide. You ready? plus water. I don't want to get too technical. We haven't done equation writing yet, but I'm just going to say this, that this stuff, calcium carbide, you should know that from our nomenclature, calcium carbide plus water yields a bunch of things plus other things. This is one of them. It's called acetylene. You ever hear of welders, a welder? Yeah. Oftentimes they use a gas called acetylene because it's so hot, right? So let's look at the molecular geometry of acetylene. Remember the rule for forming bo double bonds? How do you know to form a double, triple, quadruple bond? The central atom. Yeah, it has something to do with the central atom, okay, but this is going to be a weird one. This is going to be C, C, H. H. I'll give you that much. Okay? I'll give you that much. C, 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 H, C, C, H. Is that good? Okay? Now, all right, that's true. Okay, now, let's do, let's add up the valences. What are they? Just in your head, what do you got? Ten, right? Okay. So subtract off six. What do you got? Four. Four. Complete the valence of the outer ones. Are they already complete? Yes. Yes. So you're just going to do this. 
Split them up, two and two. Easy? Now, how many electrons does, does this atom have? It has six. Six. So it needs that. Okay? It needs that. But what happens is this comes down two and forms a triple bond. Okay? It forms a triple bond. Isn't that amazing? It sucks those electrons off the top and forms a triple bond. Now, how many does carbon have? Two, four, six, eight. How many does that have? Two, four, six, eight. How many does hydrogen have? Two, two. Right? It's linear. Let's look at this one. Do that. Triple bond, that's right. Nitrogen, nitrogen, okay? So what's the total valence of N2? Guys, what's the total valence of N2? What is it? Total valence of N2. 10. That's right. 10. And what are you going to subtract off? 2. How many you got left over? 8. What are you going to do with them? Four on each, right? What happens? How many do they each need? Eight. So what's going to happen? This is going to come down like this. And what else is going to happen? From the other side. The other side is going to contribute one as well. Triple bond. And what's the and what is the what is the geometry of that of that bond of that molecule? Linear. Linear. Okay. So when you have a linear, when you have a triple bond, it's always going to be linear. Always. Always. All right. So that's a little bit of uh, stress reduction. Okay. Let's see if we can get to this now. Remember, I'm going to do this next period as well. So between the two classes, we'll have a nice little bit of a review video. So this will be review video number one. When I do this with the next class, it'll be review video number two. I'll start where we left off. Clear? So what do we got? Uh, it says, how, how is the bonding in molecular compounds different from the bonding in ionic compounds? Let's do this quickly. Yes. In an ionic compound, one uh, the, elect the atom with a higher electronegativity steals uh, an electron from an atom with a lower neg electronegativity, while in a molecular compound they share. Correct. Think T versus S. Transfer versus sharing. T versus S. Transfer versus sharing. The ionic bond is an actual capture or transfer of that electron, where the covalent bonding is more of a sharing. Yes? Also in the ionic bond, uh, there is one middle and one non-middle? Yes, very good, excellent. In ionic bonds, excellent, I like that, very good. In ionic bonding, you have metal and non-metal. Is that true for covalent bonding? Yeah, couldn't be, can be, sure. But is it normally? No. no. Oftentimes, it's two nonmetals. Give me, give me some examples of, of, of covalent compounds. Just throw something out there. Uh, NaCl. No, that's an ionic compound, right? Ionic metal and nonmetal, right? Covalent. Uh, H2O. H2O. Excellent. Remember the story with the volcano with the African village where they died at night? Remember? They lived... They lived on the bottom of an old extinct volcano. That volcano was filled with water very, very deep. And in the bottom of the volcano, there was a rupture of a vent. And that exploded upwards and, and an enormous amount of carbon dioxide was released. An enormous amount of carbon dioxide was released. What's the atomic weight of carbon dioxide? Shall I help you? 16. 16. Is that the total? What's carbon? Carbon is 12. This is the atomic weight, atomic, the mass number. Yes? 
44. And what is oxygen? 32. And nitrogen? 28. 28, good. So what do you think is going to be more dense? Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, oxygen, or nitrogen? Carbon dioxide. This is air. So the carbon dioxide explodes out of the volcano, sinks, sinks into the village, and the villagers are asphyxiated. Isn't that terrible? What's asphyxiated? Yeah, it's, they die of lack of oxygen. What makes you want to breathe? Remember from biology? What makes you want to breathe? Your blood needs no, no, that's actually not correct. Believe it or not. No. No. What's the mechanism? No. Yeah, the mechanism is to get your mechanism is to get rid of the carbon dioxide. It's a buildup of carbon dioxide, not a lack of oxygen. It's a buildup of carbon dioxide that keeps you breathing. Hyperventilate. It means you got you get rid of the carbon dioxide in your lungs and you don't want to breathe anymore. Yes? Um, your phone says something. My phone says something? Oh, low battery. Okay, I just dismissed it. I'll have to hook it up. I think I have enough, ta enough time to, to push on here. Okay, so what about, what about how do electrons affect the shape of a molecule? How do electrons affect the shape of a molecule? Yes, senor? Um, it's like because the electron pairs, they, they like repeal. They, they repel each other. Excellent. An excellent example of how electron pairs affect the shape of a molecule. Give me an example. You have an example? H2O. Yeah, there you go. H2O. That's a perfect example. It's a nice simple one. H, O, H. These are repelling. These would be in the same line if it wasn't for those, right? Yeah. Yes? Oh. Okay. But because of those, it's bent. Correct, so that's bent. Beryllium hydride has no electrons in the central atom, so it's linear. Yeah? Yes? Cool? Uh, cool or what, okay? Okay. Ammonia? Yes? Ammonia, aluminum chloride, no central atom, no excess electrons on the central atom, trigonal planar, trigonal pyramidal, bent, linear. Easy? Yeah? Excellent. What else? What factors affect molecular properties? What factors affect Molecular properties. Anybody got any information on that? Yes, Mountis. How many bonds? How many bonds? Correct. How many bonds? Give me an example of one of the most stable molecular shapes. I'll give you a hint. I think somebody started to say it. I'll give you a hint. Diamonds. No, that's a, that's a molecule. That's not a shape, right? Somebody was saying it. Somebody just said it. I heard them. I heard it. Mouse, mouse what would you say? Tetrahedral. tetrahedral. So the tetrahedral shape is a very stable shape. So what would, what would you expect things to be made of tetrahedral? What would, a tetrahedron, what would you expect them to be? Stable or non-stable? Stable. They, they, they could be very stable. They could be very stable. Clear? So... So why is ammonia so soluble? Anybody? Why is ammonia so soluble? It's yes! Excellent! Because it's polar. And why is it polar? Because nitrogen is more electronegative. No. Why is it polar? Come on, do it. Do it. Challenge yourself. Why is it polar? Come on, guys. Why is it polar? You're close. No. The geometry. The geometry, right? Yeah. The electro you're she's right in the sense of the electronegativity does what? What's more electronegative? Nitrogen or hydrogen? Nitrogen. Nitrogen. 
Okay, so the dipoles are going to be going towards the nitrogen, correct? Yes. Yes? However, does that, the, the direction of those dipoles, can, couldn't they cancel if it was trigonal planar? Couldn't they cancel? Yeah, they would. Of course they can't cancel. But why don't they cancel? Because it's not trigonal planar, it's trigonal. Yeah! Yes! They're trigonal pyramidal because why? Because of the two electrons that are on the top. I'm just, I'm overwhelmed. Okay, I'm going to hyperventilate. Too much, I'm getting rid of all my carbon dioxide. Okay? Thank God the firefighters in Montana, forestry service, no, no first aid. Excellent. I'm great. I feel good. Okay, now. Right. So, we have time for 20 more. Now. What information, uh, no, let's not do that one. What representative units define molecular compounds and ionic compounds? That's easy. Yes? Molecules are the, um... It's a weird, it's, I know, it sounds weird. It sounds almost like somebody had too much time on their hands and just wanted to make up a new term. An individual sodium chloride particle is called a what? I know, isn't it weird? They're called formula units. Give me a break. But it's true. Individual, individual particles of a, of a covalent compound are called molecules, where individual units of an ionic compound are called formula, formula units. units. Excellent. Well done. All right, let's do, uh, what are coordinate covalent bonds? How, how are coordinate covalent bonds different from other covalent bonds? Yes, come on. Uh, one of the atoms in coordinate covalent bond gives up both electrons to make a bond instead of one and one sharing. Absolutely. One gives up two. Is there an example of that that you could think of? Give me an example of a coordinate covalent bond. Genevieve. Anything with hydrogen that has a double bond? Hydrogen is not going to have a double bond. Why? Oh. That would be that would give it four electrons, right? Yeah. Car uh, carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide, or really any what? A lot of double bonds. Our co the second bond in the double bond is coordinate covalent, isn't it? Right? What's a big one? What's a biggie? Starts with, we've been talking about it. Think Africa Lake. African Lake. Carbon dioxide, very good. Carbon dioxide, double bond, right? They get it from one atom, right? Okay. Uh, what else? What are some exceptions of the octet rule? Because we don't really call it the octet rule. I hate the octet rule. You say the octet rule, I will, I will deport you to fifth grade. Okay. What? So what are some? Why don't we call it the octet? Why, why don't Why don't we say that? Help me out here. Yes. Why do we say it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, give me some exceptions according to the book. Uh, nitrogen dioxide. Nitrogen dioxide. What? What? Give me some exceptions to the octet rule. Hydrogen. Hydrogen. Uh, helium. Hot hydrogen, yeah. How, but what, what's the, what, what does it mean, exceptions to the octet rule? Yes. Valence. Yeah, the valence. When the valence, number of valence electrons are two, doesn't that complete the valence for hydrogen? Yeah. Is that an exception to the octet rule, or is the octet rule kind of silly? It's kind of silly. Isn't it if the valence electrons are, like, valence electrons are odd? That's no, no, no. Electrons when it needs eight, eight, eight. Uh, electro, uh, valence electrons to be stable, but like helium has two uh, valence electrons and it's stable. It's in all gas. And like when hydrogen becomes hydrogen, when you complete the valence, you're just completing two, not eight. But what? What? Why don't we say the octet rule? What do we say instead? It's like what? Noble gas. Yeah, the noble gas. I call it the noble gas law. That's a Darcy thing. I call it the noble gas law. I think the octet rule is great for like, you know, I don't know. I, 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 I'd say something mean, but we have a guest, you know. Okay. I, I have to behave myself, but I'm really not nice. I'm really a mean person, but anyway, don't tell anybody. Okay, so what else? We're going to go right to the bell. What else we got? Uh, let's go down to... Um, what does... Vespa, what does Vespa theory mean? What does that mean? Valence. Valence shell. Electron. No, no, no. Valence. This helps you guys. This is 
this is going to be, a, you know, just being able to say, Vesp, what does Vesper stand for is going to help you. Come on. Valen what do we got? Valen shell electrons, electron pairs repel. No. no. Oh, yeah, but you kind of, I think you added a couple of parts of speech there. Valence, shell, shell electron, electron, pair, repulsion. Pair repulsion. repulsion. Is that what you said? Yeah, you didn't say repulsion, did you? I said repel. Yeah, repel, that's right. Repulsion theory. And, and what does that mean? What does that mean? Isn't that the way we determine shapes from our, from our gumdrop lab that we did, the last class we had, right? We do it based on the repelling of electron pairs, don't we? So the whole idea of Vesper theory gives credence to what? Molecular geometry. Do we sometimes, this is a great question. Lizzie, are you with me? Yes. Excellent. Right. Are you with me, Mr. Ethiopia? Excellent. God bless Ad Addis Ababa, my third favorite world capital to say. So let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. What was the question? What was I going to say? I don't remember. What was I going to say? I just completely lost my mind. What were we talking about? What? Vesper. 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 The fact that it helps with the molecular molecular geometry. Right, but we already answered that, right? How it affects. Um, it had something to do with uh, what we did last class. And we did last class. We did gumdrop. gumdrop lab, right? I have no idea. Do you ever have a thought just completely disappear? Yes. And you have no idea where it went. It's like it never existed. I wonder if there's something about neuroscience, about the disappearance of ideas. What do you think? It's still in there. It's, it's just, still in there? I'll probably think of it later? Yeah. All right, very nice. Like Either that or I'm having a seizure. I haven't decided which. Okay, I'm getting older, though. Do you know that I'm the oldest person on staff in the school? Isn't that amazing? Yeah, but you're so energetic. Lizzie, thank you. I'm not quite sure that's a compliment. That's a first compliment. Like, you're so energetic because you look so old and you're just amazed I look very energetic, but I'll take the compliment. You are very energetic. Thank you very much. Oh, gosh. You, you're writing this stuff down there, sir? You know? All right, good. Okay. All right. What, uh, look at this. It says, what is the electro, electric charge of an ionic compound? What is the electric charge of all electronic, uh, electric charge of all ionic compounds? What is it? Neutral. Zero. Neutral. Exactly. What are three properties of electric of ionic compounds? They're brittle. Oh, malleable? They're, no, no, no. They're not malleable. No, no, no. That's metallic. It's metals. Yeah. What else? They form crystals. Yeah. What else? And in the molten phase, they can conduct electricity. Also, when you, dissolve, when you dissolve it in water, they can too, yes. But there are industrial applications where you, you take molten sodium chloride, for instance, that is used to conduct electricity in certain industrial applications. Yes? They have a high uh, melting point. They have a very high melting point. Exactly. Sometimes the melting points are so high that in regular laboratory conditions, you have no idea what I just said because we haven't gotten there yet. That's with gas laws. Regular laboratory conditions. Are you ready? STP. When I was a kid, do you remember STP commercials? Yeah. STP, there was always this uh, Rocky Graciano. Was that guy? The boxer? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, there's this guy, and, and this STP, it's for your motor oil, and you can't even pick up a screwdriver. You know, you can't hold a screwdriver. It's so slippery, and that was supposed to be good for your thing. So when I think of STP, I think of those awful commercials. But STP means standard temperature and pressure. That's standard laboratory conditions. Standard temperature and pressure is zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. We don't use atmosphere in science. We use 101,000-ish Pascals. Who's, what's that? Who's Pascal's named after? Uh, Pascal. Pascal. <laughs> Excellent. I like that. I'm telling you, UAE is doing your cleanup today. If there were Olympics, you should join the Olympics, the UAE Olympic team for chemistry. I wonder if they have a gold medal event. What do you think? I think maybe you should, you should inquire about that. Yes. It's 12.42. It's 12.42. You mean 
you want to leave? No. All right. Uh, you know. You're hungry? I could say something mean to everybody, but that's okay. I'll let you go. It's been fun. All right. End of part one.